<laughs> so let's go. Investment appraisal. There's a major area, regular customer in the exam hall. And you're going to be having some questions from here for the exams. Now, remember I told you that in my introductory or introduction, when we were doing the overview of the syllabus, I told you the financial manager or the CFO makes for various decisions. What are the decisions? Investment decision, uh -huh. financing decision, what else? Dividend and what? Risk management decision. So we look at the financing decision where we ask ourselves where do we get the money from, sources of finance, and then what is the cost of the money, cost of capital. So now we want to go to investment decisions. So when it comes to the investment appraisal, well, this is where we are appraising to find out whether a project is worthy to be undertaken or not. Now, there are various types of projects that a company can undertake. It could be because the company wants to launch a new product. It could be because the company wants to buy a vehicle. It could be because the company wants to acquire even another company. That's an investment decision. Or it could be maybe they are working on a new product. All these things are investment decisions. Then at the end of the day, we need to find out whether the project is worthy or not. Now, for the purpose of the way we are going to be understanding, all projects can be divided into two. We have what we call statutory projects and then non-statutory projects. Statutory projects are the projects that the entity must undertake to meet what? Legal regulatory requirements. The non-statutory projects are the projects that the organization wants to pursue in order to achieve what? Its objective. So when it comes to non-statutory projects, like for instance, uh, every financial institution or company is supposed to have some fire gadgets. Or is it fire extinguisher? Whatever, yeah, extinguisher, something like that. But depending on the size of the building, you may have to dig a well. By your own, uh, at your own office with a pipe so that when there is fire, you don't wait for fire service. When they come, they can use your own water to cure the thing. Now, or to uh, quench the fire. When you are doing such a project, you won't appraise it the way you appraise what? These projects. Because financially, it will not bring anything to you, but it will satisfy what? Legal regulatory requirements. So, those kind of projects that a company must undertake to meet legal regulatory requirements are called the statutory projects. All other projects that the company wants to undertake just because it wants to achieve its objective are the non-statutory projects. The second thing that you need to understand also about investment appraisal is that the way projects are appraised or considered by a commercial organization it's different from the way the project is perceived by what? A not, not for profit organization. What are some of the things that are the distinction of these two organizations? Number one is the objective of the project. Objective. These guys are there to what? Make profit. But these guys are there to satisfy the welfare of the people welfare of beneficiaries. So that is the first distinction between commercial projects appraisal and then non-commercial project appraisal. The second thing we can talk about is that when we have two mutually exclusive projects, mutually exclusive projects, what do you think a for-profit organization will go for? Now when we say mutually exclusive, it means they are independent projects. When we say mutually inclusive, meaning the projects are what? Related. Are you getting me? So we'll be using these words later on, but you have to get it. When we say mutually exclusive, it means the projects are independent, they don't depend on each other. But when we say mutually inclusive, then the projects are connected and they depend on what? Each other. So when you have two mutually exclusive projects, commercial companies will go for the projects with the lowest cost. So they will choose projects with the least cost. 
But not for profit making organizations. If they have two mutually exclusive projects, they won't go for the least cost. They will go for the one that provides the highest welfare or benefits to the beneficiaries. Benefit to the be beneficiaries. That's what they go for. So objective one, two, when we have two exclusive projects. Then three, about the discount factor or the cost of capital that is used. Normally, when it comes to commercial companies, they would usually calculate their uh, cost of capital. So, calculated calculated cost of capital. And that is what they will use to appraise the project. But when it comes to not-for-profit making organizations, especially public sector organizations, they use the government's required rate of return. Because remember, they are not there to make profits. So they use the government's required rate of return. So that is the third distinction we can talk about in relation to commercial and non-commercial. Then the last point we can raise is the appraisal itself. When you look at the appraisal, for commercial companies, they will deal typically with the financial aspects. So they will look at financial visibility of the project. So from financial points, that's what they are going to do. What is the cost? What is the revenue? That's all. But not for profit making organizations don't only look at the financial. They look, they go beyond that to look at both the social cost as well as what? The social benefit. So they look at the social cost. The project we are undertaking, when we take the whole society, what is the effect on them? That's the social cost. The project we are undertaking, when we take the whole society, what is the benefit they are going to be getting? That's the social benefit. So NGOs, not for profit making organizations or public sector organizations, beyond the financial visibility of the project, they look at the social cost and the social benefit. If the social benefit is more than the social cost, they go for the project. But what with commercial organizations, they look at the financial visibility of the project and they will only take projects that add value to the, or uh, that maximizes the shareholder's wealth. And that is what we mean by the appraiser. So they will only go for projects that maximizes the welfare or the value of shareholders. So these are the distinctions that we can talk about in relation to appraising projects from commercial and for not for profit. Now, from here, we're going to be dropping the commercial, that's not what we are interested uh, The not for profit, that's not what we are interested in. Our interest here is for businesses, how businesses can appraise their projects. So, let's look at how the commercial business processes occur. Now, in discussing and focusing on the commercial, we have to ask ourselves the capital budget uh, process or what we call the stages in project appraisal. Every project by a for-profit making organization is appraised or goes through four different stages. We have what we call origination of proposal, or projects, let me put it that way, origination of projects, then we come to project screening, Then we come to analysis and acceptance. Then the last one is monitoring and review. So these are the four stages in project appraisal. Now let me talk about them briefly quickly. Origination of project, that's the first step. 
Now, when it comes to project origination, it can come from various sources of the organization. Number one, proposals for new projects can come from BODs, Board of Directors. That's the top management. Proposals can also come from production managers. That is, whether we should launch a new product or improve upon an existing product. A project proposal can come from selling and distribution department. Whether they, they need some new cars for the sales department. Project proposal can also come from if the organization has an investment um, department or segment about acquisition of other businesses. That's a project appraisal. So the idea can come from various sources. But this is what you got to understand. Businesses don't have the required money to undertake what? All projects. And it is not all projects that falls within the scope of the organization. For that reason, the company, after receiving projects from all these, will have to go to the second step called what? Screening. So this is where the project is screened based on what? The mission of the organization, the vision of the organization, based on the long-term goals of the organization, based on the funding availability of funds available for the period under consideration. So these are all screening of the project. Then they will also look at the visibility of the project. Is this something that we can take if we want to undertake the project? So these are benchmarks or criteria around which the project will be on screen. So if we are undertaking a project which is against our mission, which is not part of our long-term vision and our goal, but funds are available and it is visible, we will still not go for it because it is outside our own mission as a company. So all of these areas are theory. So like from this level, we may have like 20 projects. 20. BOD will bring theirs, production management will bring theirs, sales will bring theirs, investment will bring theirs, then other departments will also bring theirs. But at the end of the day, after screening, based on mission, vision, long-term goal funds, visibility of the project, this 20 may reduce to somewhere like eight projects. Eight projects, meaning 12 of them are nonsense projects that we don't have to what? Undertake because it's not in our scope. But the major aspect for us as CFOs, aside these two, is the analysis and acceptance. So how are projects analyzed and accepted? Projects are analyzed using the investment appraisal methods or techniques. And that is where our focus is going to be. Project appraisal techniques. So they use the techniques for the analysis and acceptance. So what are these techniques? We have what we call the payback period. We have a discounted payback period. We have the accounting rate of return. That is the ARR. We have the present value or next present value, MPV. Then we have the internal rate of return. I, R, R. I, R, R. So these are the five techniques that we will be going through to appraise what? The project. Now, each of the method has its own rule. That guides the management whether to accept a project or reject a project. Each of these have its own rule. So, I'm going to pause on that and then we're going to talk today about payback and discounted payback. Then next week, we're going to be concluding on those ones. So we talk about payback, discounted payback. Then as I talk about each of them, I'll give you the rule and we will decide whether we should accept a project or not. Now, once we undertake the appraisal, 
the decision rule will determine whether we should accept the project or not. Chances are, by the time we finish with our appraisal, this eight project will be left with like three or two. And those three or two, that is what we are going to be on implementing as a company. Remember, we are assuming that all those projects are mutually exclusive. We will get there where projects are mutually inclusive. And in that case, we have to find out and take one after the other, or do one or ignore all of them in that case. Any questions so far? We good? Okay. So let's go and take the methods one after the other. We'll look at payback and discounted payback today. And then from next week, we'll look at the others.